We've just seen how the adjacency matrix of a graph can be used to count walks. For example, taking the 12th power of this adjacency matrix, the ijth entry will tell me the number of 12-step walks between the ith vertex here and the jth vertex here. Now let's talk about a more powerful theorem, which is one of my favorite results in all of mathematics. It's called the matrix tree theorem. It says that the number of spanning trees of a graph can be counted by taking the determinant of an integer matrix. Which matrix? Well, it's very intimately related to the adjacency matrix. Let's look at the example for K5. For this example, the matrix M that I'm going to get is the four by four matrix where the diagonal entries give me the degrees of every vertex. So here, if I'm looking at K5, each vertex is connected to all of the four other vertices. So the degree will be four along the entire diagonal. And now I subtract the adjacency matrix. So this is the matrix that I get. And this matrix is an N minus one by N minus one matrix. So my theorem is that if I take this matrix M, this four by four matrix, what I should get is the number of spanning trees of K5. So that's what the theorem tells me. So let's look at this example. So it says that the number of spanning trees on K5 is the determinant of what matrix? This matrix M. So how can we verify that? Well, let's actually just do an exercise and compute the determinant. So this isn't so bad. Um, first, we'll take that matrix M. Well, maybe we'll copy it over. So this is equal to the determinant of this matrix M. Let's see if I can grab it all here. Okay, so we're getting the determinant of this matrix. Well, if I wanna compute the determinant, it's actually easier rather than using the formula for the determinant to do some row echelon manipulation. So let's first add all rows, add all rows to the first. That's going to adjust what the first row is. So that means that the other rows, they're gonna stay the same. So let's just duplicate that. They're all gonna stay the same but I've added them all to the first row. So if you see here, I've got a four minus three. So that's just a one. And then what do I have here? I've got, well, four minus three. So that's a one and that's a one and that's a one. Okay, that's a little nicer. Now what am I gonna do? Well, I'm gonna use a similar trick. And what I'm going to do is add the first row to all other rows. So add row one to all other rows. So what's that going to give me? Well, let's duplicate this for a second. Well, it's not quite gonna give me this. So what's gonna happen when I do this? So I'm gonna add the first row. So these ones, minus ones down here, are all gonna become zeros. That's pretty easy. So what happens, for example, in the next column? Well, this four gets increased to a five, and then I get a bunch of zeros. And then what happens? I get a zero, five, zero, 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 five. Okay, now this is a matrix that I can take the determinant of fairly easily because this matrix is upper triangular. The determinant, so maybe I should keep my determinant here. The determinant is equal to the product of the diagonal. So it's gonna be one times five times five times five, which is five cubed or 125. So what the matrix tree theorem tells me is there are 125 spanning trees on K5. Well, a tree on five is a spanning tree of K5. In fact, every tree arises in that way, right? So the number of trees on five by Cayley's theorem that we did before was n to the n minus two, which is five to the five minus two, which is equal to five cubed. And that's exactly what we're getting here, five cubed. And it's the same five cubed. You can see there's nothing special here about the fact that I took five for k5. If I take kn, so maybe we'll make this a corollary, here's another proof of Cayley's theorem 
that the determinant of m n, and we'll call this, for example, m5, the determinant of m n, and this, this is the n minus 1 by n minus 1 matrix for k n is equal to n to the n minus 2 by the same row echelon reduction. So here we have another proof that the number of trees, labeled trees, on n vertices is n to the n minus 2 just by taking the determinant of this matrix. Another thing you can look at is we can do other examples. So what's another example that we could do? We could let Cn equal the cycle on n. So this is, for example, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So here's the cycle matrix. So we can ask ourselves, what is the matrix for the matrix tree theorem for this guy? So remember that it's going to be a 4 by 4 matrix. And what's it going to look like? Well, we're going to have the degree down the diagonal. And what are the off-diagonal entries going to be? Well, they're going to be the adjacency that we're going to get. So two, sorry, one is connected to two and nothing else. Two is connected to three. Three is connected to four, and so on. And this is our matrix. So what is the determinant of that matrix? The determinant of this matrix is going to be the number of spanning trees of the cycle. Well, what's the number of spanning trees? Well, there are n edges in this graph. A tree has n minus 1 edges. So we just have to figure out which edge we delete. Well, there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 possible choices. So the determinant of this matrix should be 5.